In 2011, when Peter was working as a financial advisor, he received a call from an Australian client. The client wanted to make changes to a small superannuation fund valued at $70,000. A staff member was assigned to the client, but looked him up and saw that he was a scrap metal worker. Thinking like a matcher, the staff member declined to make the visit. It was a waste of his time. It certainly wasn't worth Peter's time. He specialized in high net worth clients whose funds were worth a thousand times more money, and his largest client had more than $100 million. If you calculated the dollar value of Peter's time, the scrap metal workers fund was not even worth the amount of time it would take to drive out to his house. He was the tiniest client, and no one wanted to see him. It was beneath everybody, Peter reflects. But you can't just ignore someone because you don't think they're important enough. Peter scheduled an appointment to drive out to see the scrap metal worker and help him with the plan. Changes. When he pulled up to the house, his jaw dropped. The front door was covered in cobwebs and had not been opened in months. He drove around to the back where a 34-year-old man opened the door. The living room was full of bugs, and he could see straight through to the roof. The entire ceiling had been ripped out. The client made a feeble gesture to some folding chairs, and Peter began working through the client's plan changes. Feeling sympathy for the client, who seemed like an earnest, hard-working blue-collar man, Peter made a generous offer. While I'm here, why don't you tell me a bit about yourself and I'll see if there's anything else I can help you with. The client mentioned a love of cars and walked him around back to a dingy shed. Peter braced himself for another depressing display of poverty, envisioning a pile of rusted metal. When Peter stepped inside the shed, he gasped. Spread out before him in immaculate condition were a first-generation Chevy Camaro, built in 1966, two vintage Australian Valiant cars with 1,000 horsepower engines for drag racing, a souped-up coupe utility car, and a Ford coupe from the movie Mad Max. The client was not a scrap metal worker. He owned a lucrative scrap metal business. He had just bought the house to fix it up. It was on 11 acres, and it cost $1.4 million. Peter spent the next year re-engineering the client's business, improving his tax position, and helping him renovate the house. All I did was start out by doing a kindness, Peter notes. When I got to work the next day, I had to laugh at my colleague who wasn't prepared to give a bit by driving out to visit the client. Peter went on to develop a strong relationship with the client, whose fees multiplied by a factor of a hundred the following year, and expects to continue working with him for decades.